Today's video, I'm going to be kind of going over a little bit of an inside the mind game play on uh, the Bears offense. If you guys want to get my full Bears offensive ebook, uh, a lot of the different things that we're doing out of this is in our school, on our school website. It's also on the channel too, but uh, all packaged really well on the school website for you guys. If you guys want to sign up for school, uh, it's school.com slash Cody Ballard. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And the cool part about that site is it's going to have all of our offensive and defensive ebooks, not only for Madden, but for NCAA. So you're going to be able to access literally everything that we have for both games over at that school site. Now, what I want to talk about today is being very, trying to be just like better. Uh, me personally, this is something I've been working on a little bit more. Just, just something I'm kind of finding about myself as a Madden player trying to be as systematic as I possibly can. Uh, I think this is one of the super slept on things about Madden, and I think it's one of the most slept on things just about, uh, just in general, like something little that you can do to win more games. If you become more systematic in your approach, it is going to pay a lot of dividends. So what I mean by that is my power counter constraint play calling kind of method or blueprint that I've been using for the last 13 years. And the whole purpose of that blueprint is to try to give really practical systems. So I'm going to be calling a power play. In this case, it's going to be double corner. And there are certain things that they have to be able to do uh, to defend the power play. For example, it might be um, you know, a specific coverage that they have to be in. It might be a specific way they have to use her. The, the, the very specific things that they have to do. When they, and ultimately, when they do that, that is also going to leave them vulnerable to my counterplay. So right here, if you look at this, he's showing a blitz look to the left side. If that slot corner blitzes, I'm really looking for this left side guy. He actually goes hard flats, which means my double corner is going to be open. And you, so you see how we're kind of like, isolating specific players, which I do think is one of the best ways to read the defense. So, you know, we kind of called the power play a couple times here. Now we're going to go to this counter play. And if we do get this blitz from the left side, we're going to be looking for that post route. But our first read is really this kind of flat to the right side here. See, he guards that, but he doesn't guard the post. His user takes the running back and we're able to hit the running back. Now he's blitzed me a couple times back to back. So one of my favorite things to do against the blitz in this offense is to throw RPOs, right? As you see right here, RPO did a really good job, and we're able to set ourselves up in a really nice second down and short yarded situation, which is really, really good for the offense. Now, another thing is he is blitzing off of the left side. Generally, that's kind of his main method of blitzing here, and this time he leaves the flat available, so we're just going to check down to our flat, and just simply, you see... We're taking what the defense is giving. We're mixing up our play calling a, a little bit, but in general, we're just kind of running our core three to five plays, right? And I I know that people think that in Madden, all you have to do is run three to five plays. It's not necessarily true. Like you have to run three to five plays really, really well. You have to have if this, then, then rules with the plays and they have to, they have to fit. The plays have to fit together Otherwise, they're not going to be good. That is super, super important. And right there, the reason I go to an RPO is because he came out in a 6-1 defense. I'm going to do it again. The reason why is because 6-1 is just historically bad against RPOs. So there's a very specific thing he has to do to stop it. He's not doing it. So we're just trying to kind of get a cheap touchdown. Now we go into a third and goal situation. Fortunately, I'm going to have to burn a timeout here. So we're going to go into the wing tight. And the reason I like to go to wing tight here, I do think it's one of the better for a yard. The stretch out of wing tight, if you're just trying to get one quick yard, it normally does do the job. So you see, especially against 6-1, I can juke inside, and a lot of times I can just simply fight forward. Wasn't able to do it that time. Now what I like to do is I like to flip it, basically just quickly go left. We're not flipping the play. We're just flipping the run. And you see how I can just juke inside. Oftentimes, it's very difficult to stop that play for one one yard or less. So, again, systematic approach. We pretty much stayed in Durham, RPOs, or corner strike all the way down the field in that, in that sequence. And we're able to kind of see what he's doing. He's kind of running hard flat cover three. He might mix in some, some man-ups and things like that. 
But in general, he's going to be forced to adjust before we're going to be forced to adjust. You never want to adjust if you don't have to, uh, in my opinion. So you want to kind of stick to your mainstay stuff until they force you to go a little deeper in your playbook. Now, defensively, what I'm going to be doing in this game, it does look like he is going to be in the swing slot. But he has Joe Montana, so I'm not too worried about that, actually. We're just going to run this cover four, try to stop the run. And the biggest thing, honestly, at this point in the year, the most important thing, in my opinion, is run defense, actually. <laughs> uh, we have a full breakdown on how to stop every run in Madden on our YouTube channel. And we have a full ebook on this 4-3, uh, even 6-1 formation, which you're going to see me do a little different style um, in terms of how I'm running this right now. And it's primarily because I have like a ton of D-line people that have Colossus, pretty much everybody in my defense line. So I'm going to be running it more based as like a shed defense. Just trying to test that out, but in general. All right, so he has this backed off corner on the right side. I just really think it's going to be hard for him to defend double corner. But as you notice here, he's showing pressure to the left side. So what I like to do is, you know, that's one of his primary ways in which he's going to be able to get pressure on me. So we're just going to go to a simple flood concept that's going to force his user to go left. And you see he didn't go left for long enough, and I got a really bad freeform. This is why I don't like freeform passing sometimes because I feel like I had him. But, I mean, he's showing this blitz pretty much every single time. If he's going to continue to just blitz me, you know, then we can just essentially, you know, run the ball. I mean, we can do some really little things. Now, one of my favorite things to do in the Bears playbook is audible to tight slots. And the reason why is because it's going to really help me pick up the dollar blitzes. And then it's almost impossible to fend this formation um, as he actually gets a crazy KO right there. Uh, I should take three here, but I'm not going to. So it's almost impossible to defend this. For I'm going to go to tight slots again. Because the way he's going to try to defend the formation is he's going to try to basically use her and still send the heat. So we're really reading this slot. If the slot goes out, we're looking to the running back. Slot goes out, we look to the running back. We just take our easy read. And you see how much faster you can get when you're making kind of systematic decisions based off of what he kind of has to do to stop what you're doing, right? And then, again, I'm going to run the RPO you know, and, and, and kind of force you to have to, you know, have to adjust to it. I think that's a super standard approach. If we ever need to use that red zone formation, we will. But I just think that's a super standard approach. And with angry runs, with, with all of the abilities you have right now, Running the ball inside the five is the safest way to play. It's really, really difficult to pass the ball inside the five. It's been difficult all year. We do have some dots in the Bears guide, but in general, you know, it's, it's hard. Now, also, uh, in the video that I did on my channel, kind of breaking this down, I said that this would be the best offense in Madden 25. Uh, and I actually believe it probably will. Uh, if you just think about like how Madden 25 is more than likely going to play, kind of based off what we've heard about the beta, this offense is really going to be good next year. Uh, the only reason why it might not be the number one offense, because I think everybody's going to be in base press dollar. The only reason why this might not be the number one offense, it depends on how – how manipulative switch stick can be from a, from a, a comp player um, perspective. That's the only thing that I could see that would would make this tight would make it would just make tight slots less effective. But I don't think double corners is going to be a super powerful route combo next year. It might be, but I just don't think so because I think you can, I think you're going to be able to kind of switch stick to take that away. But I think I think in general bunch some type of bunch whether it's bunch strong or bunch offset to tight slots is going to be really good next year. It's been good for the last. It's it was actually really a lot of people missed on not running that this year because it was so good, and I'm just kind of surprised. There's that little <laughs> random a gap out of six four man six one is so good. 
It really is such a good defense. Like if you can if you can get instant gap pressure like that, sending four, I mean that's insane. And it's really good run defense, and you get all the like you get the best abilities on the field, which is super like underrated. But every defense starts with a good blitz. You have to have a good blitz to play good defense in Madden, pretty much across the board. Six one does have a great blitz, but it also has really good sheds as well. Right there, I was expecting that blitz. I got that seam streak to kind of replace the blitz. And you see, we're able to just really dot him up. And again, he's not doing anything. This is why you can't, like, he's running one of the top five blitzes in the entire game. Like, comp players run what he's running, but he's not adjusting. He's not adjusting the coverage behind it. He's not taking away certain things that are kind of, like, obvious, obviously open. And so, again, systematically, what you want to do, and this is what I think, you know, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, those quarterbacks – were really good at when they went to the line of scrimmage, they actually like thought through, okay, if the defense does this, what is my answers? And you you watch those quarterbacks play, they do a really good job of, you know, essentially checking into all kinds of different things. Uh, they, they, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Like if you watch Tom Brady play, one of the things Tom Brady's famous for, Manning's a little bit more – Manning's not actually as as much as this, but he 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 could do this if he wanted to. But one of the things that Peyton Manning is super famous for doing is, or uh, I'm sorry, Tom Brady's super famous for doing is like getting the ball out of his hands super fast, like processing the reads super fast. And I think it's because he had a very systematic approach to how he played quarterback. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you want to check out the offense we showed off in this little gameplay, check out the school site. Link is going to be in the description below.